the arrangement of the apparatus to demonstrate Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction is shown below. And then 10.1.1 says, state Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction in words. Uh, we know fully well that it states that the magnitude of the induced EMF in a conductor is equal to the rate of change of magnetic flux linkage. The magnitude of the induced EMF in a conductor is equal to the rate of the change of magnetic flux linkage. And then 10.1.2 says, state two ways in which the deflection of the galvanometer can be increased. So let's analyze our sketch, right? Uh, that is used to demonstrate Faraday's law. So here's our galvanometer here, right? So gal galvanometers are apparatus used to measure very, very, very small current, right? Uh, but we know fully well from electric circuits that um, V is equal to I multiplied by R, right? So when the galvanometer deflects, it shows that there's a current uh, induced, right? And then when the, uh, the deflection increases, the current in increases and that the voltage of the EMF increases. So in electromagnetic induction, what are two ways that you can use to essentially increase the induced EMF, right? You can choose to use a stronger magnet, right? A stronger magnet. Or you can choose to use the magnet quicker inside the coil, right? So move the magnet quicker, the magnet quicker. Another way you can use, you can increase the number of turns on the coil, increase uh, the number of turns, the number of turns. And where is all of these a suggestion coming from these suggestions are coming from the definition right uh, because we know fully well that the induced emf will be equals to minus n n being the number of tens on the coil right multiplied by the change in the magnetic flux linkage right uh, divided by uh, the change in time so if you move the magnet quicker inside the coil then you're reducing delta t right and as a consequence e should increase uh, at the same time if you increase the number of turns e should increase and then if you use a stronger magnet you're gonna have a way greater change in the magnetic flux linkage right and now we can go to 10 point room 10.2 says a coil with area uh, 0.6 meter squared is held with its axis coinciding with the direction of the magnetic field of strength 0.4 tesla so if uh, they are coinciding then the angle is zero right and then 10.2.1 says let's calculate the magnetic flux linkage so the magnetic flux linkage is given by the strength of the magnetic field uh, which is b right uh, measured in tesla multiplied by the area in meter squared and then cos uh, of the angle right but we are told that the coil and the direction of the magnetic field coincide with each other. So our angle will be zero. So this will be equals to what is the strength of our magnet? The strength of our magnet is 0 0.4 Tesla. And then what is the area? It's given to us uh, 0 0.6 multiplied by cos of zero. We know that cos of zero is one, so no problem there whatsoever. So we have 0 0.4 multiplied by 0 0.6. So what is 4 multiplied by 6? That is 1224. So this will be 0 0.24 W. What does W mean? W means Weber, right? It's WB, not just W. Yeah, Weber. And then uh, that's how you calculate the magnetic flux linkage. Uh, you use the, mag the strength of the magnetic field and the area and the angle most of the time that angle is zero right 
Uh, but that is not always true. And then 10.2.2 says, in order to produce an EMF of 9 volts, so before I read any further, problem solving 101, EMF is equals to 9 volts. The area of the coil with its axis coinciding with the direction of the magnetic field, again, our angle is zero, right? So we can say theta is equals to zero. Uh, we are told that the area is halved from 0 0.6 to 0 0.3 in two minutes, right? So we have uh, delta T being equals to two uh, minutes. And then the question is saying, let's calculate the number of turns in the coil, right? We're looking for N. So what most people usually get wrong here, they don't realize that this formula says the change in the magnetic flux linkage, right? They just check the magnetic flux linkage that they calculated in 10.2.1 and substitute it in the equation. And that is totally wrong. This equation uses the change, right? So you will have to find the magnetic flux linkage initial and the magnetic flux linkage final, and then subtract the two values and find the change. Here we have the initial uh, magnetic flux linkage, right? And then we know that uh, the area is now halved, so we can find the change in the magnetic flux linkage after, right? And then uh, find the difference between the two and substitute in the formula. So let me show you what I'm talking about. So we know fully well at this point that uh, the magnetic flux linkage initial is equal to 0 0.24 Weber, right? So let's find uh, the magnetic flux linkage final, right? When we have halved our area. So we know uh, the magnetic field strength multiplied by the area and then the cos of theta. Uh, so what is the magnetic field strength? Uh, it is not changed, right? So it will still be 0 0.4 multiplied by the area. The area is now 0 0.3 and then cos of 0, which we know fully well is 1. So we have 0 0.4 multiplied by 3, that is 12. So 12 uh, 0 0.12 Weber, right? So now we can substitute our values in our equation, right? So we're going to have the EMF being equals to uh, minus N and then um, magnetic flux linkage final minus magnetic flux linkage initial divided by uh, the change in time. So let's go ahead and substitute. We know that the EMF is 9 and then uh, what is what is N? N is what we're looking for. And then flux linkage final uh, 0 0.12 minus initial, which is 0 0.24. And then we divide by the change in time. The change in time is said to be two minutes, right? So we have two multiplied by 60. Uh, so if we cross multiply, we're gonna get nine multiplied by two multiplied by 60. Uh, being equals to minus n uh, multiplied by uh, minus 0 0.12, right? Uh, 0 0.12 minus 0 0.24 is minus 0 0.12. So when we multiply minus n and minus 0 0.12, we're going to get plus 0 0.12n, right? So we can just drop the minus sign and divide both sides by 0 0.12. So divided by um 0 0.12 and divided by 0 0.12 those two cancel out and we get a number of tens uh, which is equals to 9000 tens